Greetings, fellow mathematicians. I recently got a request from a fellow mathematician asking about including higher order differential equations. So instead of going third order, fourth order, I figured let's go to the extreme to an infinite order differential equation. So here our differential equation starts with the function y and then we subtract y prime minus y double prime, so on forever. Now if you want, you can rewrite that in summation notation, rewriting all your derivatives here, summing from the first derivative onwards. And again, be careful there, that's not an exponent, that's denoting the nth order derivative. Now this is a peculiar kind of equation, and a lot of times when there's things that are peculiar in mathematics, there's probably a trick. And here, the trick that we're gonna use to solve this is let's take our differential equation and differentiate it. So here, we're gonna get y prime, minus y double prime, differentiate this, minus y triple prime, differentiate that, minus y quadruple prime, and I'll just go one more here, differentiating this, the fourth order derivative, we'll get minus the fifth order derivative. And how we're actually going to solve this is we're gonna subtract these two equations. And what we're gonna notice is if I subtract here, we have pairs that will cancel. Just be careful with your negatives occurring everywhere. All right, your fifth derivative here, that's gonna cancel out with what's buried in the rest of the terms. So if we take these equations and subtract, Let's do it, let's take the top one and we're gonna subtract the bottom one. We're gonna have y and we're gonna have minus y prime, minus y prime. Those do not cancel. That's gonna be minus two y prime. And then all your other pairs cancel out. You're subtracting here, the signs change, add them, they subtract out. And what we get here is zero on the right hand side. And this is a very simple first order ODE, which we can solve very easily as a separable equation. Let me rewrite this, add the 2y prime to the other side. I'm gonna rewrite y prime as dy over dx. And if you go ahead and separate this, let me divide the two over, multiply the dx over and divide the y over what you should get here, separating this to solve it, we should get one half dx, and then that equals one over y dy. You know what to do from here. We're gonna integrate both sides with respect to x on the left and with respect to y on the right. So we'll get one half x plus a constant. I always include the integration constant on the x side, and then your right side here, that integrates to natural log of y. And if you go ahead and exponentiate both sides with respect to base e, we're gonna get e raised to the one half x plus c, which you can rewrite. And exponentiating natural log of y cancels out, leaving you with y, and you should get this here as a constant. That's your e to the c, which we're splitting up using exponent rules here, just in case it's not obvious. We're splitting this up as e to the 1 half x times e to the c, and e to the c is another constant. And we're calling that constant c, and there we go. We get our solution to this infinite order differential equation. Now that seems too easy. Is this actually right? Well, let's go ahead and check in the next part to see that this actually is a solution. To show that c times e to the 1 half x is a solution to our infinite order differential equation, we need to calculate a few derivatives and hopefully observe a pattern. So let's go ahead and differentiate this a few times. We only need the chain rule and each time we differentiate, the chain rule will give us a factor of a half. So your first derivative, you're gonna get one half 
times c e to the one half x. We're going to differentiate that again and get another factor of a half from the chain rule. So your second derivative here should be one fourth times c e to the one half x. Differentiate that again, you'll get another factor of a half. So the third derivative here comes out to one eighth c e to the one half x. And at this point, you can probably see the pattern. All of your derivatives here are basically one over a power of two. And we should be able to fit this to the pattern for the nth derivative, one over two to the n times c e to the one half x. All right, now let's take all these derivatives, plug them into our differential equation, and we want to show that we get zero at the end. So let's plug all of our derivatives in. First, we have the function. So we get c times e to the 1 half x, and then minus all the derivatives. So minus 1 half c e to the 1 half x, minus the second derivative, minus a fourth c e to the 1 half x. And we'll go one more term, minus the third derivative, minus 1 eighth c times e to the 1 half x. All right, to simplify this, we're going to notice every term there contains the exponential function. So let's factor out c times e to the 1 half x from everything. All right, and if you do that, the first term will leave you with one. And then notice here, all the remaining terms after that first term are all negative, so let me factor a negative out from here. And we can write the remaining terms as minus now, one half plus a fourth plus an eighth, so on and so on. And in order to show that this is a solution, we need to recognize that what we have here in the parentheses inside the brackets is a simple geometric series. So here, your first term is a, which is a half. Going from one term to the next is an additional factor of a half. So that's your common ratio, r. And since you're all experts on your calculus two and infinite series, you recall for a geometric series when the ratio in absolute value is less than one, you get a convergent geometric series. And we can write down the sum. We have A, we have R. The sum here, that comes out to be A, a half, divided by one minus R, so one minus a half. And if you simplify that, the numerator is a half. One minus a half is a half. And something divided by itself is one. So what we find here is this sum in the parentheses there comes out to one. And what we have is c times e to the one half x times now one minus the infinite series here sums to one. And we get what we want in the brackets there. We get zero, thereby verifying that y equals c times e to the 1 half x is a solution to our infinite order differential equation. Now, there is another solution, but that's boring. y equals zero, the trivial solution is also a solution, but no one cares about the trivial solution. Hope you enjoyed this peculiar differential equation. If you did, leave me some comments below about what other videos you'd like me to make on other peculiar qu equations and peculiar, peculiar topics in mathematics, and we'll go from there. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe.